afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the MCM game stage. It's not a bad start. It's not a bad start. So we've got a very special guest to open the stage for you today on Friday. Uh, I would like to welcome to the stage Elias Defexis, the voice of Adam Jensen and many other video game characters. <laughs> there you go, there's you. I don't even know where you got that picture from. From right, my Facebook page. Right, just take a seat. Hey everyone. I can't see any of you, but... Uh, it's those bright lights, right? Yeah. We can turn them off. Uh, right. Right. So thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. I'm glad to be here. So as you can tell, just from your normal voice, I think everybody can tell who your major video game character was. How did you get into that role? Um, Adam, Adam Jensen, I believe you're talking about. Although yes. Andre Coben kind of sounds like this too. Um, Adam, I got in, I just auditioned. I was auditioning for a bunch of different video games. I had done Rainbow Six, Vegas 2, I had done that. I'd done Need for Speed, Carbon. Um, I'd done a couple, of, uh, a couple of games and then I auditioned for that one and nobody told me what it was. It was this huge secret because Deus Ex had come out 10 years previous and um, it was a really popular game. So they didn't want me to talk about it. They didn't want any actors to talk about it. Actually, video games do that all the time. They'll give you a script and they'll call it like, um, you know, Die Hard 5 or something like that. I'm like, oh, I'm making a Die Hard video game. But then when you realize, oh, it's actually Splinter Cell Blacklist or Assassin's Creed. Um, it was like that with Deus Ex. They, they gave me a script. They, I don't remember what the title was, but they said he's kind of like a Clint Eastwood character. Um, so do it like that. And uh, I auditioned for it, had a couple of callbacks. And that was, God, it was like six years ago now. And then I worked on the game for four years. Yeah. D did you know about the franchise before you basically they told you what it was. Yeah, I knew about Deus Ex because uh, I was a PC gamer when I was a kid. I had, I remember Deus Ex and Wing Commander. I played all the time. I don't know if you guys remember Wing Commander with Mark Hamill. That was awesome. Um, and Malcolm McDowell. But um, I played that game. I played Deus Ex uh, a little bit. But like I said, when I auditioned for it, even when I got the part, they're like, okay, you're going to play this character. And uh, they didn't tell me what the title was. And they gave me a very loose script and it was um i barely even understood what was going on it was you know augmentations and and the illuminati and and then they finally told me what it was and i went back and i'm like oh yeah i remember playing this game and uh, then i worked on it for like twice a month doing voice work and then some performance capture work uh for four years yeah. did you have any inkling that it was deus ex when you're reading it soon as you played it back on the pc uh, not at first. I mean, when I, like I said, when they started talking about Illuminati and things like that, and, and then they said, uh, uh, you know, cybernetic implants. And even though in the original game, or the, it takes place later, so it's like nano implants and things like that. But um, when, uh, when, I, when I started really getting into it, I, like, I think I, I recognized this. And then they told me what it was, and then I went back and played the whole first game. And actually, I, I kind of tributed the original... Uh, performer, the guy who played J.C. Denton, I kind of uh, gave him a little tribute in my performance of Adam Jensen. I kept him very kind of, you know, monotone, a bomb, you know, that kind of very, very monotone, even though they told me, do it like Clint Eastwood, kind of, he's like a Clint Eastwood character. Uh, but I still always had J.C. Denton in the back of my mind. Were you conscious about that, or did you want to create a new character that everybody could kind of relate to, or was it more about a bit of an homage to J.C. Denton? At first, it's funny, you know, if you guys play the game, and you, you uh, that first time when you break into the cop, where you go into the cop station, and you talk to the cop, and you're trying to convince him of something, go back and play it. My voice is different than the rest of the game, because that was my first day. And I was just finding the voice and finding the character. And I have kind of like this New York accent at some point. And I'm like, why didn't you change that? It, it bothered me so much. The game came out and I called uh, Square Enix. I'm like, you guys couldn't change that one line where I sound like I'm from the Bronx for some reason. Um, but yeah, I mean, I wanted to tribute the original game. But over the four years of performing Adam, I started uh, learning more about the character. And it's a little tricky with... Uh, protagonist in a game because you kind of want the audience to feel, especially with a game like Deus Ex where it's uh, all about their choices, you kind of want the audience to feel um, that they're the character in a weird way. So I kind of 
purposefully kept it uh, kind of, I don't want to say one note because there were times where he's very emotional and things like that, but for the most part, I kind of kept it where you can imprint your own personality onto him, and I just tried to sound cool most of the time. <laughs> is it difficult to do that with a player choice? Because one minute you're angry, the next minute you're trying to be calm and passive. Yeah, it's, it was very difficult with, uh, with Jensen because, first of all, we didn't record it or shoot any of the performance capture stuff in sequence. So, I mean, one day I'll go in and I'm doing the ending and I'm trying to figure out what got me here. And then I had the writers telling me things like that. But then also, not only that, but you have to do the five different conversation trees that you're doing in this ending. So you have, you know, <laughs> okay, here's where I'm aggressive, here's where I'm passive, here's where I'm, and you do that, and it just, t that's why it takes so long, because it's like a choose your own adventure book. You just gotta record every line of dialogue. I remember somebody had, had calculated how many hours I actually s spent talking. There's only like 400 hours. <laughs> like if you play the whole game, Adam doesn't shut up for 400 hours. Is that quite confusing to do, just changing back and forth from character to character, or is, is that a natural thing for an actor and a, or a voice actor? Uh, I think it's pretty natural. I, I mean, it, it depends on the character. If you're playing a really dark and brooding character, and, I mean, like playing Coben, uh, he's such a crackpot that going from somebody like Coben to... I was actually working on a show at the same time called Alphas, and I was doing Coben and Alphas, like going back and forth. And uh, luckily, they're both psychopaths. But uh, <laughs> it seems to be my niche for some reason, playing. I'm actually a nice guy. <laughs> but I would go between the two of them. And Coben was like crazy manic. And the other guy was kind of calm and stoic. And um, I remember like sometimes, you know, you get, oh, no, I'm being too Coben-y here. And I'm, but generally, if you're good at your job, that's not supposed to happen. So you do a lot of acting and a lot of voice acting. Which do you prefer? Um, I don't really have a preference. Um, voice acting is a lot less time um, and I got kids and a family and so it's like it's always like oh I'm only gonna work four hours today that's awesome and television and film acting is like 16 hour days for you know three weeks straight where I never see my kids so uh, but I think being on camera it's, it captures a little more subtlety and a little more um, kind of nuances than 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 obviously just talking can capture. But nowadays, like with Coben, he kind of looks like me, but it's all done kind of like Avatar and, uh, or Gollum or things like that, where we're completely covered in the suit with the dots, the balls, and the, you have a camera on your head that's pointing at your face, a little camera, and your mic is sticking right here, and you can't get close to anybody because you bang cameras. But uh, everything is done like that. Like Coben, I didn't spend, man, I, didn't, I think I spent one day in a sound booth Everything else was done performance capture, uh, which is a lot of fun. Did you like him as a character to play? Like you said, he's a bit of a nutter. Coben? Yeah, I love Coben. He's, he's crazy. In the last game, in Conviction, which is the first time I had ever done performance capture, actually, um, he was just always high, always high on cocaine. That was the one note the director kept giving me. He's like, just you're high, you're crazier, you're higher, you're higher, you're nuttier. And then when I played the, new, when I played the character in Blacklist, it suddenly he was not high. So I had to figure out how to be a normal, like sober Coben, which was a little tricky to be honest, because most of the time he's yelling and off his rocker. But uh, this, last, this last game he's sober and behind bars. So. How'd you get into character or something like that? Obviously I don't think Ubisoft would provide the coke on the side for you to do No, that. but I can get it somewhere else. Just get it somewhere else. <laughs> no, I mean, it's, it, it's, it's always fun, right? I mean, what's the most fun thing? Somebody says, just go crazy. Just go nuts. And um, that's what I did with somebody like Coben, which is like the opposite of Jensen, which is like calm, cool, collectively, like everything. The, the word that Jensen says the most is right, right, yeah. all the time, right. Because <laughs> um, he, he's so always calm and figuring things out, but Coben is the other way around. But then I got, you know, you play characters like, I played uh, Federico in Assassin's Creed, and... Um, <laughs> that guy's like, I, I, I had to change my voice. I had to sound Italian. And I, I was all up here and wing sing songy and things like that. So that's what's so great about this part of my job, this doing the video game thing, is one day I'm an Italian guy showing the player how to rob dead bodies, and the next day I'm the guy making the dead bodies with a raspy voice. So how did they pitch Adam Jensen as a character to you? I mean, what did they say and what direction did they give you? 
Um, like I said, it was, it was a lot of, uh, like they, they would say, he's calm, he's, he, we're, we're, we kind of based him on Clint Eastwood, uh, so you gotta be, he's kind of the man with no name, he doesn't really have an identity because it's been stolen from him, because he's been, you know, killed and taken apart, but um, yeah, it was more like kind of just basically playing him very straight, you know, and um, I, I mean, I love Adam. I, I, he's, he's so much. He's so much fun to play because he's always doing this, these dry, witty comments, and they're they're all, <laughs> they're always subtle. And and the my life literally has changed in the sense that I can't live my life and actually say I never asked for this without thinking of it. Like I can't do it. The other day, I brought my daughter. She she asked me for this is absolutely true. She asked me for mac and cheese, and I brought her like some sort of penne or something that I made. And she said, she's like, Daddy, I never asked for this. <laughs> and that, I was like, I'm never for the rest of my life. I can't hear those words or think those words. And on Twitter, <laughs> if you guys go on Twitter and follow me on Twitter, you'll see, like, if I could say anything, if I, if I complain about a flight or, a, you know, it's raining outside, it's just 500. Like, oh, did you ask for this? You never asked for this, did you? Did you ask for that? But again, it's like, it's such a blessing to play this guy uh, that I don't care. I've, so I've lost those words for the rest of my life in my vernacular, but that's all right with me. Did you have a favorite line of his? Because he, he has a lot of witty lines and he's quite <laughs> smooth. You know what my favorite line in Jensen says? I don't know if you guys remember. There's one point where he's talking to somebody, this gangster, and the gangster's like, um, yeah, my friend died, uh, Big Rizzle died. Uh, da. And then Jensen just skips over and he goes, yeah, rip. What do you got from me? <laughs> <Something> <laughs> like that. Rip, which I always found funny. And again, that's another thing people say to me all the time. Could you say rip? Actually, when people die, like people I admire, and I'm like, oh man, you know, Roger Ebert died, rest in peace on Twitter. What do you think? Everyone's like, yeah, rip, Roger Ebert, yeah, rip. <laughs> Can't win. Did you resonate with Jensen as a character? I mean, do you find a lot, do the, your qualities mirror his or? In it? In a sense, I mean, in, in a sense, if you pick what I would pick as a character, because it's not, that's a great thing about Jensen. Like with the other characters I've played, it's linear and you know where the character's going and you can make a judgment uh, or you can justify what he's doing. But there's, I remember specifically recording lines for Jensen. I remember one performance capture session, session for Jensen where he's talking to Megan's mother and he thinks Megan is dead. And <laughs> Megan's mother asks him what happened. And your natural instinct as the good guy would be to say, oh, he, she, she didn't suffer, or she died. And there's one part of the script where he describes specifically how she died, like she broke her neck and then she died, and it was all vulgar. And, and I was reading it going, how can I make this work as an actor? Because who would do this terrible thing? But I'm sure somebody chose it, so I had to justify it and make it work. And that's what I did. I always wanted to know, what was it like to voice a robot man? <laughs> I don't know, ask Peter Weller. Uh, I, I was hoping that they weren't going to put any like additions or things on my voice, and I'm glad they didn't. Uh, one thing I love is when people hear me talk in everyday life, and they're like, uh, oh, you sound like him. You're not putting on a Batman voice, which I like to hear, because a lot of people, when the game came out, thought I was putting on some sort of voice. But I, I wasn't. I was just kind of talking like me. So when you walked into the audition, did they ask you to put a voice on? Was it just be yourself? No, again, I didn't know what it was. It was just, you know, you just read this character. He's an ex-cop who's been turned into a robot. I'm like, all right. I just played him like I played Jensen. Yeah. And your voice kind of fits that role as well, yeah. right? Yeah. In fact, it's lost me jobs. I shouldn't say this, but there's a, a game called Far Cry 3, which I'm sure you guys know, where I had played, uh, I think his name is Brody or Jason. Yes. I had played him for two years. Performance ca Well, I didn't have to performance capture because it was first person, but... Um, all voice, and then when Deus Ex came out, they replaced me because they wow. were nervous that we don't want people playing this game and thinking of another game. It's justifiable, it's understandable, but my normal voice is what I used for that character too. So now it's like I'm losing voice, <laughs> losing work because Jensen is so popular. Again, it's a blessing, I'm not complaining. I actually saw the video you did with Vass Oh, stage that, video. I hate that guy. <laughs> oh, well, you said it was staged. I wish he was here right now. I don't know, for you guys who didn't know, me and uh, Michael Mando, the guy who plays Voss in Far Cry 3, we have kind of a 
rivalry going on. We grew up in the same town, and uh, we go to conventions together and things like that. And we worked on a couple of games together. I worked with him a lot through Far Cry 3 before I got fired. <laughs> and um, uh, he's a jerk. <laughs> you got the better role in the end, though, right? Yeah, I, I don't know, man. Voss is pretty friggin' cool. I love Voss. Um, but yeah, Jensen. I mean, Jensen's Jensen. So again, I'm not complaining. So this was your first major lead in like a triple A game. Yeah. I mean, did you find there was more pressure on you going into that rather than like Federico, you're always going to be second to Ezio and Roger Craig Smith? Yeah. No, I didn't feel the pressure because I didn't know the game was going to be as successful as it ended up being. Neither did anybody else. We were kind of, the, the Square Enix bought Eidos Montreal, but initially when we started working on it, it was just uh, Eidos Montreal, a small company, I don't know what the budget of the game was, but they, didn't, they weren't paying me that much. And, uh, you know, it was, it was like, oh, I hope the game turns out well. And then when the game started, when we started releasing, you know, trailers and things like that, and the game started getting some buzz, then I started feeling a little bit of pressure. Like I said, then, like, when I hear things in the, in the game that I didn't like, I wanted to go back and fix them. They didn't let me, but... Did you get anything from the fans? Because obviously the original, especially Deus Ex, it's generally held as one of the greatest games of all time. Yeah. Did you get a lot of abuse from the fans? Did you get a lot of well wishes? I mean, how did that happen? And it started with abuse. Okay. Uh, not not for me, but for the game. Like a lot of people are like, "This is gonna stink." Just like me. Like I look at the RoboCop trailer. I'm like, "You can't remake RoboCop. I don't care. You can't remake it." So it might be good, and I might love it, but right now I hate it. Um, but that's probably how they felt. They're like, "You can't do a sequel to the greatest game of all time." And then they played the game, or saw the trailers, and they obviously liked it. So then the pressure kind of came off, and then it, it reversed. It became, people love Adam Jensen now, so. So did you see much of a change when the company was bought by Square Enix yourself? No, I didn't see any, I think they made it very, they, they purposely kind of kept me away from that. They're just like, just do your job, do the performance. They didn't want, to, they didn't want me to be affected by, uh, by any sort of change. And I, I, didn't, I didn't even notice, really. I mean, the budgets went up a bit, but uh, not specifically of the game, but maybe of the marketing and things like that. But I didn't notice anything. Can you see more kind of mainstream actors getting into video games with the introduction of like, the, the avatar suit you were talking about? Um, yeah, this is a bad thing to say, but I kind of hope not. Because a, fr like a friend of mine, I have a friend of mine, David Hader, who you guys probably know, played Solid Snake for, what, 10 years? And they replaced him. Yeah. Keeper with Sutherland, uh, right? Kiefer Sutherland, who's a great actor, uh, and a Canadian guy like me, so I'm, like, I'm proud of him. But Hader is Snake, and that's going to bother me forever, and I think it's going to bother the fans. And I think that gamers have their own kind of com celebrity community, like guys like that are here, Troy and Roger, uh, Michael Mando, David Hayter, Mark Muir. Yourself? Sure. <laughs> um, but like guys like that, we're kind of like, we're, we're kind of the celebrities of this cult, this um, cult or what do you want to, whatever we want to call ourselves, gamers. Because I do it too, you know, like if I see Troy's in a game and even though I know Troy, I'm like, ah, I got to check this game out. I was watching Spider-Man cartoon with my kid the other day. I'm like, hey, it's Troy. I'm like, I love that stuff. Um, so I, it kind of bothers me a little bit if they market it as a, a, like a, a movie star in a game. Um, kind of like it always bothered me when rappers were in movies, like that yeah, kind of yeah. thing. Um, I think that the, we, we have our own kind of community, and uh, we should keep it that way. And that's not to say that you can't cast uh, somebody who isn't known to become a great character, but um, I, I don't know. If you're gonna sell the game with a movie star name, it kind of bugs me. Although, uh, a friend of mine is named Keith David, and he's in a whole Mass bunch Effects. of games. Mass Effect. And, but they don't market it, they, he's just a great actor. So they don't market it as Keith David starring in, even though the guy's in a million movies. So that I don't, I don't mind. But when you start Kiefer Sutherland in Metal Gear, that kind of bugs me. Were you surprised then to see Michael Ironside leave Splinter Cell? Because that I mean that happened while you were working on both games, right? Yeah. One game you had Michael Ironside, the next game it was... Yeah, but that's, that's a little different because, and I'm not just defending it because I'm in it, that's a little different <laughs> because uh, Michael, um, I worked with Michael a lot. I've done a couple of films with him and, and obviously the last Splinter Cell game. And he said to me after the last Splinter Cell, he said, I'm done 
playing Sam. I was like, really? Because I'm a huge Splinter Cell fan. I'm like, no, I don't want you to be done. And then it kind of became a mutual thing where Ubisoft went to Michael and said, well, we want to performance capture everything, like I was talking about earlier. And Michael is 60-something. He's 250-something. So he's not exactly Sam Fisher, yeah. uh, although his voice is. So there's the argument that you could you know, say maybe put his voice over, over Eric's performance, but then you lose kind of the subtlety. If you watch Eric, everything is kind of, if you watch my, uh, Sam Fisher in Blacklist, everything is kind of, there's very subtle little movements that he does that bring up the character that you may not notice, but your brain did. And that's what we couldn't do with, with Michael. And Michael was like, yeah, 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 I'm done anyway. So it wasn't like they replaced him and said, forget it. They just said, well, look, we're trying this. And Michael said, go ahead, I'm done. Was that your first time working with Eric? Uh, no, I had worked with Eric on a very cheesy show called Flash Gordon we oh, had God. done together. Uh, I don't know if you guys saw Flash Gordon. Don't go rent it or anything. Um, no, Eric's an awesome guy. He's actually a great, great guy. And, uh, and he's a really good actor. And he's perfect for Sam. You know, he's like 6'4", he's 6'3". He's a little younger than, you know, Sam's supposed to be in his 50s yeah, and Eric's in his 30s. But um, I don't know. I think, he did a, I think he did a great job. And everything you see in the game, right? Everything you see from the, if you're, you know, you're hiding behind a wall and you grab somebody and take them down, that's all Eric. It's all Eric doing the motions and doing the fights. And when you get shot and die, that's Eric dying. It's, so it's, that's why they, they wanted to go a different way. So in terms of you, do you get recognized out in the street? Or does somebody recognize your voice? I get recognized. What, what do you guys have here? Do you have, have EB Games or GameStop or things like that, game stores? We, we, we have a game, yeah. Yeah, uh, well, when I go in there and I ask for things, I'll get like, what? can you say that again? Um, can I have NHL 13, please? <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's your Adam Jones. I get that. Um, I get recognized from TV shows, but uh, in terms of the game stuff, um, I mean, Coben looks a little like me. They, they did scan my face and they did a whole thing, so maybe one day someone will think I'm Coben, but right now it's just TV. So do you ever not troll people? Uh, walk into game stores and just talk in the voice. Just, <laughs> I think when I happens. first noticed that Adam was popular, I used to walk in and go, hey, hi, um, can I have... Uh, no, I didn't ask for that copy. And things like that. Um, but, no, I mean, uh, I, it, it's cool, but I don't really go out and seek it out. Only at places like this. Who, which character would then, would you say, was your ideal character to voice? If you could choose any character in the video games industry to voice, who would it be and why? I'd probably want to kidnap Roger and make sure he can't do the next Batman game, if that's the case. <laughs> I'll do Batman. Um, You've got the no, kind of the tone for Batman. Yeah, well, right? again, I mean, not, not that I would have got it, because Roger, is, he's actually really great in it, but they wouldn't audition me for it because of Adam Jensen. Same thing. They're like, no, 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 we don't want Batman to sound like Adam Jensen. But that's not, again, that's not to say that I would have got it over Roger, because Roger's amazing. Um, but I don't know, man. I, Batman, I think. Any sort of, I'm a big uh, comic book fan, so I'd like to, you know, maybe, uh, you know, like a Zod in a cartoon or something cool. Something like that. Are you worried that you're now forever pigeonholed as Adam Jensen? I think in our community I am, no matter what. Um, when I, when I talk normally, when I speak normally. Like I said, with Coben, uh, I, if you go on YouTube and look up Coben clips, nine out of 10 of the comments are like, hey, that's Adam Jensen. I knew I knew that voice. I, I, you can't help it. Um, but, you know, there are other games that I, I've done a whole bunch of other games where, you know, my voice is like this or my voice is like that. But everybody now and again goes, ah, there's something there that I recognize. I think I just have a unique voice, so I'm it's like a curse and a blessing because it keeps getting me work, which is great, but it's going to lose me jobs. It's just what it is. So before voices, or even during, you do a lot of mocap as well without the voices, right? Um, I've, I've done that, but they're changing that now. It, I mean, for NPCs and players that you guys you shoot or things you, people you see walk in, yeah, you do a lot of just mocap. I did a lot of those guys on Splinter Cell, actually. When I, wasn't, uh, when I was done doing Coben for the day, they'd say, could you play uh, the guy running up and grabbing a gun, you know, and things like that, which is, which is fun. But now, you know, they're, even the way they audition for games now, they audition them like films. They use film casting directors, they use film directors or television directors, and they don't bring you into a sound booth anymore. They just don't. It's all just done like a film now. I guess the, uh, the wrestling background. Oh, yeah, to talk about the wrestling background. <laughs> 
I did train as a professional wrestler for about three months. It wasn't something I ever wanted to pursue. I just, I was a big uh, WWF, WWE fan growing up. I'm not so much anymore, but when I was a kid, man, like Hogan and Beefcake and Macho Man, my God, I was like, they were heroes to me. In fact, I don't know how my father didn't, I, I, I'm not gay, but I don't know how my father didn't think I was gay. Because I had a picture of Brutus the Barber Beefcake like this with like cut pants that you can see his whole ass <laughs> on my wall above my bed. And my dad didn't never said anything, which is fine. <laughs> but I loved wrestling. I trained for a little bit. I, uh, uh, it hurts. Anybody who says wrestling is fake is uh, not getting it. It's not so much fake as it is predetermined. But these type of chairs, I've taken a lot of them off of my head and things like that. And it hurts. Did you have a name? Or did you not get yeah, my phone? name was Twisted Steel. Twisted Steel. Because we were a tag team of Twisted Steel and Sex Appeal. That was our oh, okay. tag team. I was a bad guy, of course. I did, the one I remember the most, I did this show and there was like 3,000 people there. It was so much fun. But all I did was a run-in. And I grabbed a chair and I was supposed to hit my, uh, the good guy. And the good guy ducked and I hit my partner and then he, it was Halloween. So he put a pumpkin on my head and smashed my head with a chair. And somewhere there's footage of that, somewhere. And don't ever want to see it because it hurt a lot. We've, no, we don't have it. We don't have it. Sorry. But that would have been nice if I would have known there was footage We've of it. We've got the footage right here. <laughs> so, right, Adam Jensen, obviously heavily augmented guy. If you could have any augmentation in the world, what would it be? Oh, I get that question a lot. Sometimes it changes. Sometimes it's cloaking. You know, who doesn't want to be invisible? Sometimes it's the jumping thing where you can jump from really great heights, which is cool. But I think in the end, I want the pheromone thing. Because then I could just get whatever I want all the time. So you would have every voice actor role, right? So yeah, that's right. I just have every role I wanted. I'll be able to play Batman. I'll tell Roger to quit, and then I'll play Batman. So back to the wrestling. How did you get from wrestling to acting? I didn't. Wrestling was just a lark. It was, okay. I was always studying. I, I went to theater school, and this was actually right when I graduated from theater school. I was like, oh, there's a friend of ours. I have a friend of mine who's a kind of a, a indie wrestler in Canada, and... Uh, he, his trainer, this 350-pound guy named Mark the Grizzly, Mark the Grizzly Bear, uh, trained me. And a splash from a 350-pound guy hurts a lot. I can imagine. Um, yeah, it was fun, man. It was just something I did for fun. I, 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 would never, I don't think I'd pursue it because I don't like getting beat up, and it really does hurt. But uh, it's just something I loved growing up. So you trained as an actor, and then you went into voice acting. How did it work? What, was, what came first? It, it was kind of the, at the same time. Uh, I did a lot of cartoons and uh, um, a lot of... Uh, I didn't really do any video games at first, and the first video game I did was Need for Speed Carbon, which was um, not even performance captured. It was just us on camera. I don't know if you guys remember that game, but we did it in front of like a, just a green screen, and they would put some weird filter on it, and it was just us. And I was doing my, uh, my Joe Pesci impression. That was how that character did. It's just the Joe Pesci guy. Um, and then I, I auditioned, you know, because I do a lot of commercials, like I'm the, I'm the voice of Lexus cars, you know, things like that. I do a lot of those kind of things. Uh, so I would make friends with the people who do, uh, who cast cartoons and video games. And then my first voice game was Rainbow Six, uh, Vegas 2. I played the bad guy in that again. And um, <laughs> when, they, when they were doing that, it was funny. They used to have the tech guys motion capture the stuff. They would have the tech guys get, get up there, and, and these, these guys from Quebec, so they all have these very thick French accents, and they'd mocap the character, and then I would have to match what they did. So they've changed that since. So you've done a lot of additional voices as well, right? Yeah, sure. I mean, uh, what do you mean, like, in terms of, like, a game? Yeah, you know, non-major -ma characters. Oh, yeah, you know, like in like Assassin's Creed. In every Assassin's Creed game, I play, like, 30 different people. What's the most random thing you've had to say? Bizarre. Uh, you know, what I, you know what I hate? I hate um, uh, escort missions in Assassin's Creed game. I don't hate them in the game, but I hate playing them, uh, recording them, because all my dialogue is, this way, hurry up, follow me, this way. Look out! Like for like four hours, you're doing just that, um, <laughs> which is which is you know again I'm not complaining, but uh, I would I remember getting the scripts for Assassin's Creed. I'm like ah oh, escort mission, escort mission, escort mission. <laughs> so it's just a different character now. It's like okay this way, come here. <laughs> now it's a different guy. That and the although it's 
it's fun when you play a game like Rainbow Six or Splinter Cell, you get a lot of scripts where it's, okay, now uh, you're a bad guy, so now it's, grenade, to the left, to the right, get down, he's over there, where did he go? Things like that. And you do that for four and a half hours, or for two days, and then it's the yelling. My favorite story about weird, weird kind of voice things is when I first played Coburn, there's a scene where Sam kicks me off of a balcony. Oh, yeah. And um, so they're, they're, I'm, I'm in the booth, I'm going to record the yell, and they say, okay, go ahead, do the yell. So I naturally, like anybody else would do, I went, ah! And they're like, you don't have to lower your voice as if you're falling, we'll just fade you out. <laughs> and that stuck with me. So every time I do a yell, I'm like, don't fade out, don't, don't, don't do the effect yourself. But there's a lot, like things like that, like when you catch on fire, like Adam Jensen catching on fire, it's like, oh, uh, 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 and there's like, it's like three days of that. Oh, it's like, okay, now, now, okay, now you're jumping. <laughs> okay, now you're jumping higher. <laughs> okay, now you're moving a box. <laughs> They move in a bigger box. Ah! These are not, like, I'm not exaggerating. That's exactly what, like, three days of work is. It's, um, <laughs> sometimes I'll do that and be like, this is a really silly job I have that I do this for a living. Have you ever had to say anything that you looked at and you thought, I can't really say that, can I? Because um, all the NPCs in these video games just yeah. say some really ridiculous things. I'm sure I have. I don't really remember, but I've, uh, I'm, I'm sure I've bumped into things. Like, this sounds stupid. Let me change it. Um, I think I'm at the point in my career where they'll listen to me now or <laughs> if I want to change something. But I'm sure at first it was... Uh, yeah, I remember doing... What was the game? I don't remember what the game was, but it was like... Uh, the only thing I played was like the NPCs. And it was all just like... <laughs> where did he go? He's around the corner. Oh, I must have been seeing things. Like things like that. You're like, do people really do that? Do bad guys walk around and go, oh, I must have been seeing things. I'll walk over here now. But... I guess they do in games. Did you have that much of that with, with Jensen, where you thought, hold on, he wouldn't say it like this. Can I say it like, like the ad lib kind of stuff? Yeah, especially when we started doing the DLC stuff, because I knew Jensen at that point. So they, I would bump into things on the script, and I'd be like, I, Jensen would not say it like that. I remember doing a commercial for, the, for Jensen, and the directors were not game directors. And they were like, OK, could you be a little, they were giving me these weird directions. I remember just saying, guys, this is not, he's never, like, Jensen never would do that. And so you start learning the character. But at first, it was just like, was that good? What else do you need? That kind of thing. But then after four years of playing him, I think I got him now. How was it doing the DLC? Because that's obviously a new thing in the last, in this current generation of consoles, where usually you'd voice a game and that would be it. You'd move on to the next game. But what, how did that work? Did they call you back into the studio? Was that already in your contract to start with? Or? No. The, contra the thing with games is very weird. You don't have contracts and things like that at, at first. Now they're kind of getting into that. But it was just like, oh, we need you. Could you come back into the studio for this? And I went in. And Actually, in the DLC, I went in and did it. And then they called me back three weeks later and they said, we need you to do it again because at the beginning when you're beat up, I don't know if you guys remember the Missing Link DLC, when you're beat up, you're not tired enough. So I, I live in Toronto, and they record in Montreal. And so they flew me into Montreal to record like four lines of just a more, more tired, beat up Adam Jensen. It's weird, man. They spend money on a lot of things. Of course, they couldn't change the lines I hated from the game, but they changed those. Did you have a particular line that you hated that wasn't a grunt or something? No, no but when I played the game, I actually didn't remember so much of it. I remembered vaguely some of it, but... 90% of the game, I'm like, I don't remember even recording this stuff. Um, and there were some parts of my performance, which happens with everything I do, where I just was like, oh, I don't like that. I didn't, I am going to skip this cutscene or things like that. I didn't like what I did. And I can always tell when I got Jensen and when I was trying to get him. Uh, so if they throw Jensen into the sequel, because I know they're making one now, if they do throw him in there, I, I know exactly what I'm going to where to go with Jensen now. My character would be much more streamlined. Have there been any talks with yourself? Not yeah. particularly. I asked what, when the fall came out, I said, uh, is Jensen going to come back? And they, all they said was, don't, don't worry, we have big plans. Now, I don't know if that means Jensen's coming back as a lead, if he's even coming back at all. Uh, I know that they announced Deus Ex Universe is coming out, so I hope I'm involved in there somewhere. Um, I have no idea.
Well, after your, the, like the, the fans' response to you, you would have thought so, right? They must have seemed positive, right? Yeah, yeah. I think if I was making the game, I'd bring me back. <laughs> but, so, so what about you? What, what have you got next? What have you got lined up that you can talk about? Um, I don't know. Do you guys get sci-fi here, sci-fi network? Yes, we do, yes. Of course you do, yeah. There's a show called Bitten that's coming up, uh, which is a werewolf show, which is pretty cool. Yeah, you heard of that? Uh, it's, uh, it's a good show. Laura Vandervoort, who played Supergirl in Smallville, she's the lead. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm on that. And uh, that's it. The other things I can't talk about. I'm not allowed to talk about. They're video game related. They're video game related, but I can't. Like, that's the, the, we're talking about contract. The one contract you do sign is NDAs. Oh, well, like, I signed many of those. What's that? I signed many of those. Yeah, don't yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't say anything about what you're working on. Are they big roles? You can surely say that, right? Yeah, I can say that. Yes, two. Two? Yeah. Brilliant. Right, we're going to open it up to questions from the audience. So if oh, cool. anybody likes to ask a question, please raise your hand. If I, I see. Can, if I can one, see. Two. Right, I'm going to go back here. Totally taking a picture of this crowd. I'm going to come behind you. Right. Um, a few months back, after Deus Ex came out, you did a video series called Adam Jensen Plays Deus Ex. Yeah. I think you played the first hour or two of the game. Yeah. And I always wanted to see you play through like, the whole game because they were brilliant videos. They were very funny. Oh, Do thanks. you plan on ever doing those kind of videos? You know what? They oh. released this director's cut that came out on Tuesday, right? And they did a commentary on it. And I called them like, why the didn't you call me to do a commentary on it? That video you're mentioning has like a million hits between the three videos. And uh, they didn't ask me to do commentary. I think I would. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. I liked it. The thing about that video is I'm not playing it. Every time there are the guys who interviewed me played it, and every time I see it and I see some comment going, "Man, he sucks at this game." I'm like I want to write back, like it's not me, man. I didn't play. I'm good at this game. Yeah. <laughs> so Jensen's a gamer. Are you a gamer now? I, I am. Yes, very much so. I play uh, like Splinter Cell game. I friggin' love those games from years. Uh, Assassin's Creed. Before I was even in them, I was playing them. Uh, I was actually in the first one, the first Assassin's Creed, I, my, one of my first characters was in a DLC, but I had played the game previously, so I was playing it, and then they, they called me, and they're like, do you want to be in it? I'm like, yeah. Um, yeah. I'm a big game, and Arkham City is maybe my favorite game of all time. Do you have to play every game that you put a voice in? Um, I try to get, some of them aren't very good, so <laughs> I try to get through them, uh, but uh, yeah, I try. Most of the time, they send them to me anyway, so I try to, I try to play them. Great. Does playing your own games kind of break the fourth wall a bit, like because you can hear your own voice? Uh, a little bit. Like I said in that video, it's like the most fun thing about playing Jensen is I can just add my own lines of dialogue to the, <laughs> as I'm walking around. I think in the video, Megan's talking. I'm like, shut up, Megan. Leave me alone. <laughs> things like, just, God, Pritchard, you're so annoying. Things like that. Um, but when I play, most of the time I play bad guys. So when I play bad guys, it's, it's, easy, to, uh, it's easy to shoot myself in a game. That's kind of fun. Things like that. But no, it doesn't really. It, it takes me out of, as an actor, when I watch it. Like I watch a film, a television show that I've done. That takes me out of it. I always feel like I look weird or I... I jump out as like looking different than everybody else, but uh, on video games, because even though sometimes it's my face, it's it's so uh, textured that it doesn't bother me. What's the favorite game? What's your favorite game that you've worked on? My favorite game, sorry. What's the favorite game that you've done voice acting? Oh, that I've done. I would. I mean, it's tough because I would say Jensen is my favorite character I've played, um, but I'm a. I just love Splinter Cell Blacklist so much. I'm such a big fan of that game. Um, but I love Deus Ex too. I just, I'm a big, um, excuse me, I'm a big stealth game guy. I love stealth games. Uh, and that's what I love about Blacklist, just trying to not be seen and play through the whole game, which you can do in Deus Ex too. Um, but I, you know what, I'm not, I'm not a big fan of um, uh, open world games where you have to like, <laughs> like, um, like Grand Theft Auto, I like the game itself, but I don't have the time to drive to another town, like actually drive to another town. Those bother me. Those games will always bother me. Like L.A. Noir, it's like, oh man, I can't drive all the way there. I gotta go to bed. I got kids. Like things like that. But I love, uh, and I'm, I mean, I'm Canadian, so I like hockey and uh, things like that. 
how did you get into voice acting? Just, just through, uh, you know, normal everyday, the way you would go, but I went to theater school, and then when I was finished theater school, I uh, managed to get myself an agent, and then I started auditioning, and it's basically how you do it. You know, it's not, it's not as complicated as it sounds. And then you just have to hope that your agent gets you the, the right auditions. I mean, I was lucky in the sense that Eidos Montreal is in Montreal, which is my hometown. So every time I would go back there, I was able to stay and uh, just stay for two weeks and audition for something. And uh, that's, how I, that's how I got it. Pretty simple, actually. Brilliant. Um, if there was a universe in uh, video games where you could live your normal life with your family, which one would it be? <laughs> live with my family in a video game? Uh, little Big Planet? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> No, Lego, Lego world, that's where I would want to live. No, I mean, video games, mostly they're like violent hell holes for the most part. You don't really, would you want to live in Detroit in where an Adam Jensen lives there? It's a hell hole. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think because I got kids, my mind obviously it goes to, automatically goes to like, let's go to, you know, Legoland, things like that. <laughs> that's a good question. Brilliant. Uh, you mentioned you're a gamer. Um, what's your console of choice? X are you an Xbox gamer or PS3 or PC? Um, I am a PS3 guy, I gotta say. I am a PS3 guy. Uh, you know why I'm a PS3 guy though? Because I'm a crazy movie fan and the Xbox chose HD DVDs originally and PS3 had Blu-ray. So it just naturally I went to PS3 because I wanted Blu-rays. And then just after that I just was hooked on. And plus, I mean Troy's here and The Last of Us is a PS3 exclusive. I fucking love that game. Like, I love that game. And um, the PS3 exclusives I really like. I mean, I like the Xbox exclusives also. And actually, um, Ubisoft was nice enough to send me this uh, Blacklist Xbox 360. So uh, now that I have that, I'll probably, well, for the next month until the next one comes out, I'll probably buy some Xbox games. Seeing as we're talking about consoles, the new consoles come out next month? PS4, Xbox One? Are you going to get one, both? I'll get the PS4, PS4? probably for sure. Controversial. Controversial. Well, not really. Oh, no, the actor is not. The Xbox not going to hire me for any uh, <laughs> Xbox Soul games. There aren't that many, you're safe. <laughs> <laughs> With the new generation of games coming out on obviously more powerful consoles, have you noticed any difference to how the games you make or you're involved in being made for future consoles? Absolutely. Um, I was just doing a convention like this, a panel with a whole bunch of other actors, and we had put uh, scenes from our work uh, on like a little clip, and um, there was Splinter Cell, and then there was um, oh, Assassin's Creed 3, and then a friend of mine, Tristan, he plays Adewale in Assassin's Creed 4, and we had just, uh, the footage they gave us was of the next-gen Assassin's Creed, and it looks 100 times better than 3. It's amazing. You know, uh, and you could really see, just as an actor, you can really see the subtleties of the performances and uh, the little eye movements and things like that. It's, it was really, really cool. And I can't, the games I'm working on now, I, I know they're going to be next gen, and I can't wait to see what they're going to do with them. That's, it's, it's, it's amazing. You know, if you think about when PS3 came out, what was it, like 10 years ago? And the games then and the games now just on that one system, how amazing they've become. Now imagine in 10 years from the, X the PS4 or the Xbox One, how amazing it's gonna look. It's just getting better and better. They're gonna hit a point where it's gonna go too realistic and they're gonna tone it back. That's what I think they're gonna do. They're gonna go that, what's that Tom Hanks movie? Uh, you know which one I'm talking about, with the train, where it just looks weird. Um, the Uncanny Valley thing, that's what they call it, where it looks too realistic so people get creeped out. They're going to get there, and then they're going to tone it back with games. That's what I think. Fantastic. Hi, um, Karen. Hi, Karen. <laughs> um, I'm just wondering, how did you react to finding out you were going to be a main character like Jensen? Um, like I said earlier, I didn't really know it was going to be this big. When I originally got it, I just thought it was another... I really thought I would work for three weeks like I did with Assassin's Creed or whatever, and I thought, all right, this is gonna be fun, it's a really cool character. And then when they started telling, I don't even actually recall when they 
told me or realizing that it, it's going to be a long time. I don't remember having that record, that realization, but um, suddenly it was four years later and I'm still doing the character um, and he's still, you know, super popular. So I didn't, I really didn't know it was so gradual that I hadn't, I hadn't noticed. You know, it's not like one of those things like when you audition for a role as an actor and you think, oh man, if I get this, my career is going to do this, I'm going to do this, I'm going to be able to do conventions, I'm going to be able, I had no idea. I was just like, yeah, this is going to be fun. And then it turned into something else. Great. Hi. Uh, you mentioned how long you play characters for. Uh, how involved do you get with them, and have you ever struggled to leave a character behind? Uh, I'm not really that kind of actor. I'm, um, uh, I know there's some that, that definitely get into the point where you're like, you're like Daniel Day-Lewis did, <laughs> you know, when you're really into it. Uh, I, I, I have the ability to turn it on and off pretty quickly. I have to, because I have a family. Uh, it's not meant to insult anybody who doesn't do it that way. It's just my style. Um, but, you know, th there have been times where, not so much in games, because they're very, you know, you're the hero or you're the villain, and it's not, they're not so subtly written. They're not, they're not going to get into, like, depressing things in a game, you know, for the most part. Except maybe in Last of Us, that gets pretty depressing. But, um, which is why I actually love that game so much. But uh, on, on television, I've played some characters, and in films, I've played some characters that have, uh, you know, you really got to get deep and something happened. And then it takes me maybe a few minutes to get out of it. But I don't, I try not to bring that home with me. Or maybe I do and I don't note it. I don't notice. I don't know, maybe. Maybe my wife's like, you're grumpy today. <laughs> and I, I didn't notice why. But with, you know, with Jensen, I was very into the character when I was there. And I was very in a different, in a different uh, way to answer your question. I was very specific about what I wanted to do once I learned who he was. I was very like, okay, this, I would never say it this way. I'm doing it this way. Like after two years, I got him. You know, like I was saying with the DLC, it's like, I'm doing it like this. This is how I'm doing it because this is Jensen. Same thing with Coben. Coben, they just left me alone. Uh, the last game, Coben was so crazy. And this one, they're like, just go. You know him. Go. And I was changing lines left and right, and they didn't care. Right, so we've got a few minutes left. So it wouldn't be our game stage if we didn't do something kind of random. All so right. we're going to call this next segment Deus Ex Bloopers. <laughs> and we're going to get Elias to say any line you want from any film, any comic book, any video game, any whatever, and he'll do it in the Adam Jensen voice or the Cobin voice or... <laughs> They're the same voice. Federico. <laughs> so yeah, if you want to put your hands up, just say a line. Something like, I don't know. And it, get to the chopper. That's a fairly famous <laughs> line. So if you do that... You know, you know it's funny actually. The get to the chopper thing to do it, the yelling for Jensen was always hard for me because my voice naturally sounds like this. But when... If I start talking loud, my voice kind of does this. Okay. But when they said to me, well, now you don't sound like Jensen. When you're yelling, your voice goes higher. I'm like, damn, so I got to yell as Jensen. That's the only time I put on a voice. So I'd be like, get to the chopper. I could try to lower my voice to keep it jensen -y, but yelling. That was tricky. So no shouting then, right? So yeah, yeah, so just, whatever you want. Brilliant. <laughs> Here we go. Keep it clean, by the way. I'm watching uh -huh. you. Do you know the, uh, the definition of insanity? <laughs> Can we have that as Jensen? No, you have to, you have to do it like Voss, man. I like the only it. definition of insanity? What does he say when he bangs his chest? Like, me or him? Him or me? That's why I didn't play Voss. Uh, <laughs> do you know the definition of insanity, Voss? That's what I should say to him, eh? I should have done that. Damn it. <laughs> Great. So, what do you think about the developing process of a video game? <laughs> so, how did you feel playing somebody else in a video game? Bad guy or Colin or whatever? You, know, you, want you, me to, you want me to say all that? Whatever you want. <laughs> uh, to answer your question quickly, I know it's not a yeah, question. So, basically, uh, I always play Blacklist in Italian. From now on, I'm going to play in English to listen to your voice, for sure. Oh, thanks, thanks. man. That's very nice to hear. Yeah, I love, I, love, I love playing the games I'm in. I love it. It's one of my favorite things. Okay, so we'll jump back to the quiz. All right. Come on, let's have a good one. Hi, could you do like Jensen as like a father and be like, sit down and eat your dinner? <laughs> I do. It's funny. Every now and again, I'll, be, I'll catch myself talking to my kid. It's like, eat your Cheerios. Isabella, eat your Cheerios. 
stop it. <laughs> and my wife would be like, what are you, why are you talking like Jensen? I'm like, I'm talking like Jensen. I didn't even notice. Isabella, sit down. <laughs> right, any more hands? Eat your vegetables, kids. Here we go. Just wait Julie. until that stops. Julie. In EastEnders, Barbara Windsor always used to say, get out of my pub. <laughs> Do I have to put the egg? Get out of my pub. Get out of my pub. Now I sound like Wolverine. Get out of my pub, bub. So There's a character I'd love to play. To say, yeah. a good character for you, Wolverine. Right? We got him all right at the back, just running back here. <laughs> Get out of my pub. Okay. All right, this is a line from the first day of sex. Can oh. you say, I asked for orange, they gave me lemon lime? <laughs> nice. <laughs> but I have to say it like Jason, I asked for orange, they gave me lemon lime. A bomb. That's what I remember from day of sex. A bomb. Oh no, a bomb. <laughs> Great. Any more? Got time for one more? Oh, we got a couple up here. Oh, here we go. Time to two more then. I'm feeling generous. <laughs> here we go. Uh, JC Denter's What a Shame. <laughs> oh, yeah, the What a Shame. That's a fan. What a shame. What a sh I try to do a JC Denton. Do it like Adam Jensen. What a shame. Yeah, rip. Uh, could you say uh, some lines from uh, Godfather like Adam Jensen? <laughs> like Godfather? Oh, you know what I'd love, to, I'd love Adam Jensen to be Fredo from Godfather? What does Fredo say? He's like, <laughs> I'm smart. I, I want respect. I'm smart and I want respect. <laughs> oh, I love that movie. Brilliant. Can I get a huge round of applause for Elias, Thanks, please? guys. Thank you very much for coming, ladies and gents. We've got a full schedule, so be sure to come back tomorrow. Troy Baker will be here. Your yeah, friends. me and Troy and Roger and a whole and bunch of other guys. So thank you for coming. See you tomorrow. Thanks, guys.